John Hartson was a tough guy of football with a fiery reputation, a goal machine for club and country. But which of the eight clubs he played for did he enjoy the most? I enjoyed everywhere, really, because Celtic, I was probably the most successful. I won trophies. Arsenal, I was very young, and it was a great experience to go in there at 19. I'm still a baby at 19. You don't know anything. Um, and then, you know, I'm playing with Paul Merson, and I'm playing with Dennis Bergkamp. And a year prior to that, I'm playing against Bristol City for Luton under-18s youth team. So... Um, you know, the speed of my development, really, and, and, and the, the, the place that I was at. I was in Arsenal's first team playing Champions League football, um, which was just amazing at the time. I probably can't remember most of it because it's so far along ago. And when you're a player, you're in this bit of, you're in a bubble. You know, you're in a bit of a bubble. It's all happening really, really fast. Um, but it's nice to look back. It's nice to reminisce. You know, they were great times. But yes, at West Ham, I enjoyed... I enjoyed that Wimbledon, Luton was where it all started. So I w I'd be doing an injustice to the other clubs that I played for if I actually... Everybody knows my love for Celtic and the success I had there and the relationship I had with Martin O'Neill. So if I had to say one, probably Celtic is you know, the best club um, that I enjoyed the most, particularly because of the success I had there. At the end of your career at Celtic, you were managed by Gordon Strachan. <laughs> It took him a few days to pluck up the courage to call you to tell you that you were being transferred to West Ham. I know, Park. I know. Well, it was it was pretty common knowledge that um, we'd won the league, we'd won the league, and uh, and I think that the club wanted to move on several players. They'd already moved on Alan Thompson, they'd moved on Chris Sutton, and I think the club um, were quite prepared to move me on and. Uh, and I went on holiday, and um, I was on holiday in the summer, thinking I'd go back to Celtic. I'd one more year left on my contract, and I received a phone call. I was right by the swimming pool, and um, my wife and a couple of kids and that were there. And uh, I remember go, uh, my phone going, and I was I, I went on Gordon Strack, and he said, "Oh, John, really sorry, son." He said, "But I've agreed a deal to sell you to West Brom." He said, you've been great for me last season. We won the title in his first season. He said, but I just feel I want to go down a different um, you know, a different style, different way of playing. He said, I've agreed with Brian Robson at West Brom to let you go. He said, the fee is £500,000. And um, I really wish you all the best. He says, you know, let's stay. And, and I can keep in touch with Gordon. Everything's fine. No issue with that. And then I went to West Brom with Brian Robson, who again was somebody that I had the utmost respect for. A great player, a, a great man, and um, a lot, a lot of time for Brian. And then at West Brom, I feel I, um, I just lost my way a little bit. Uh, lost my way. I was, I was in a difficult place mentally. I was gambling a lot. I put a lot of weight on. I was, there was a pub right opposite where I lived. I was probably drinking too much, um, and then it just all seemed to hit me at once. Where I was thinking, well, I'm. I'd gone through a divorce. I, I wasn't seeing too much of my kids, which was heartbreaking. Um, I was driving from Birmingham back down to Swansea every couple of weeks to see them. Um, that played its toll heavily um, on, on my physicality and um, difficult to leave Swansea at six in the morning, drive straight to the training ground and then train. Having had three hours in the car, um, heavy on your legs and everything else like that. Um, so it all it all came on top really, and at that particular time, I I, w I was definitely, definitely feeling the ill effects of something going on, and I just feel ultimately I was diagnosed with testicular cancer that spread to my lungs and onto my brain, and and maybe it was the pressures of um, the realization of my career has come to an end, I'm in a lot of debt, I'm out of control. I'm gambling, I'm drinking, I'm heavy, I'm skipping training, um, and it just all it just all became too much, and um, and ultimately then I was I was um, I got in the team and I got out of the team and manager situation changed, I was sent out on loan to Norwich for a month. Ultimately, I feel all that pressure, all that um, stress, I was bringing on myself. And I'd brought on myself over a number of years, um, took its toll. 
and then I just hit a wall. Coming through that period has, has certainly been, you know, a, a, a big wake up call and uh, a chance for me to have put things right and to now live the life that I'm living. Let's talk about your international career because you made your debut for Wales in 1993. 51 appearances for your country. How mm. much did that mean to you to represent Wales? Huge. And I wanted to get to 50. I think to have got to 50 caps. Not many do it. You get a golden cap when you get to 50. And um, <clears throat> I probably had a few more caps in me, to be honest. Again, I had issues with the managers. One or two managers there, Bobby Gold in particular. I, I, God bless him. I, I, I like Bobby now. We get on really well um, whenever we see each other. Um, again, I blame myself. I blame myself because he left me out of a few squads and he left me out of a few games where I felt I should have been playing. And maybe I should have just kept my mouth shut, but I didn't. I went in to see him and then all of a sudden walking away from it and things like that and falling out with Bobby and then... Um, so I reckon it was a good 20 caps more in me. I think I should have got 70, not 50 odd. Um, but I absolutely love playing for my country. I'm a very, very passionate Welshman, um, very patriotic about where I come from. I speak the, the language. I give my heart and soul for my country. Whenever I wore that, um, that red shirt with number nine on the back, I was, uh, I'd heroes before me, you know, Dean Saunders, Rush, Hughes, Trevor Ford, John Charles, these guys, um, and to have, for me to have led the line, you know, as a centre forward for the amount of time that I did, it gives me enormous pride to think that I did that for my country and uh, my children, obviously, Welsh speaking, um, my eldest too, and um, I love I love Wales, I love Swansea. Um, moved up to Edinburgh, but I went back to Wales to get all my treatment and everything else in, in the hospitals. But playing for Wales was definitely the, the highlight of my career. I watched you as a teenager from the North Bank. You were <laughs> a real hard guy of football. You had this reputation. Obviously, you've said that you had a bit of a fiery personality at that time, but hard on the pitch as well, very physical player. But that's not the man that I know now that mm. I've, I've sort of got to know since, professionally and, and personally. Mm. Well, I don't think it was the man even back then. It was like when... What it was, was that I was very competitive and I wanted to win. And if that, you know, w when I trained even, I, I loved that physicality. Um, I loved that body contact, you know, backing in. I loved gritting my teeth. Do you know what I mean? And I, I, I liked, if a centre half came and smashed me in the first minute, I thought that was great because I've got to get him back now, you know. I. I hated it when centre halves tried to befriend you and how's it going, you know, how's the kids and all, how, how are you getting on? I hated that because <laughs> I didn't want to be his friend. Do you know what I mean? I, I just loved that physical physicality. Um, I loved the body contact and, um, you know, me and Martin Keown used to go hammer and tongs in training. We used to just, because Martin would always say, John, if you can get the better than me today, and Martin was 10 years older than me, a lot of experience, played for England, Everton, Villa, Arsenal, great player, really tough, strong centre-half. And we roomed together and we'd go out to the training ground and he'd say, right, we'll do it for real today. Me and you as if it's proper. And I'm thinking, well, if I can get the better of Martin Keown, I can get the better of anybody because there weren't many better than Martin, if any. He was a top, top player. Um, that's how we used to do it. But... I'd like to think I've always been a people's person. I've always had time for people, um, you know, and sometimes you get this little bit of reputation. And when I go around now, when I do after dinner talks and hospitality lunches and, and corporate dinners and people meet me and uh, you, you, you just got this persona. I think we're all very judgmental of people, aren't we? But then um, are people surprised when they meet you? They are very much so. They say, well, you know, you're quite softly spoken and you're, you're a decent guy and and I'm like well what what did you expect but maybe I give that image out um, and it's like a lot of people when they write a book you know they write a book and a, a lot of what's in the book is exaggerated tenfold um, especially when like my, my, my cancer story it's all there um, you know that is plain and simple I told it exactly how it is but um, 
you know, when people when people sort of sometimes do interviews, they try and come across as people that they're not. Um, I always try and be just very normal. I'm from a council estate in Swansea. Um, I've I've never forgot my roots. Never forgot where I come from. I'm still John, that boy that left at 16 years of age to go and live the dream and try and make it as a professional footballer. Seems an awful long time ago now, but um, I've always remained uh, very humble.